This is a K and E radial planimeter made in 1920. It has this little part with a spike to hold it still on your table. Actually, you have to push it all the way in. Put this little belt on top of it to keep it stable. And then the real business sits right on top of that. There's a groove on the bottom of this arm so it can spin around and also slide in and out. And as you spin it, this marked wheel slides along the paper and measures some kind of distance. It has this part which counts full revolutions and this part which is the vernier. You put this contraption in the center of a round shape, trace around the outline with the little pointer part, and it measures the average radius of your shape. Long time fans will know that I'm into planimeters. These are physical instruments meant to measure the area of a shape on paper. I've done videos about the dot planimeter, which is a very, very simple way of measuring area by counting dots. Then there was the MK area calculator, which is a similar idea but does the counting electronically. We got the Adisco area measure, which is a pretty unique ratcheting design, but also a similar idea. All of these are pretty easy to understand if you visualize it properly. And then there's the polar planimeter, a precision instrument which, in my opinion, is very hard to understand. I mean, I can go through the mathematics of why this thing measures the area, but to me it's a bit beyond something I can make sense of intuitively. And imagine my surprise when I recently learned of another type of planimeter, the radial planimeter. This thing was actually sent to me by a generous viewer. So thanks, D. This was made by the K&E company, which was one of the big slide rule manufacturers. They also made upscale graph paper. I did a video about that one. Also drafting tools, including planimeters. This one came to me with the original instructions and the original case with two working latches and purple velvet interior. This is classy. The instructions explain it pretty well. The radial planimeter consists of three principal parts as shown in the cut. The cut? I'm glad I had the instructions because this isn't really what I was expecting. A planimeter is for measuring area. Planimeters are designed for ascertaining by a simple mechanical operation the area of any plane surface. Okay, so what's so special about the radial planimeter? They say it is designed for the purpose of measuring mean heights of circular diagrams with uniformly spaced ordinates. Eh? Basically, you use this thing to measure the radius of a circle. See, if I have a perfect circle and I put the center in the middle here, then as I go around, the wheel is just rolling out the distance around the circumference of the circle. The units are a little weird though. The wheel here measures 10 going all the way around, but that's not actually 10 inches or centimeters or anything. It's just marked to 10 units. And then you're supposed to multiply your reading at the end by 0 0.0004. This converts it to inches. Okay, I guess. This multiplication converts the answer to inches, but it also converts what was measured, which is the distance around, to a radius. You know, the circumference is 2 pi times the radius, so this weird 0 .0004 has a built-in 1 over 2 pi to convert it to the radius. Anyway, I drew this circle on my computer to have radius 3 inches. Let's see how we do. Gotta stay on the line. It's harder than it seems. Now the answer comes in four digits. The most significant digit is here on the little wheel, 7. And then you get two digits from the main wheel. The labeled value is 5, and then the value of the subdivision is 2. And then the last digit comes from the vernier, which here reads 0. So my measurement is 7520. Multiply that by 0 .0004, and I get a radius of 3.008 inches. Look at that accuracy. Now, of course, measuring the radius of a circle is not the real purpose of this instrument. Obviously, there are easier ways to measure the radius of a circle. And anyway, what's the difference between this and just a normal, like, a measuring wheel? Well, the difference is that the wheel here isn't free to rotate. It's always perpendicular to the arm. That means it only measures distance around the circle, not any other kind of wiggles in the shape. And that's really what this thing is for, a wiggly shape. Still has to be roughly circular, but kind of wiggly. 
and as you go around when the thing is farther away from the center it measures a little bit more distance and when it's closer to the center it measures a little bit less distance and these things kind of even out in the measurements so what you get is the average radius like check this one out this thing I built specifically to have radius 3 on the top side and radius 2 on the bottom do what your daddy told you and I get an average radius 2.48 I mean I mean 2.5 yeah 2.5 you can even do it with a squiggly wiggly one and it's gonna measure the average radius it means like as you go around the circle you imagine all the different kinds of radius you could get well this is the average of all those just because they called it a planimeter I expected it to measure the area somehow they even talked about areas on the back of the instructions but it doesn't really do that it measures the average radius I guess you could take that average and make a circle like this is the circle that you would get if you somehow smoothed out all the bumps and wiggles but that circles area isn't the same as the area that you started with like you can tell on this thing if I draw the circle at the average radius that circle actually has less area than the thing that I started with the radial planimeter just isn't about areas we need to accept this in all these examples I've been putting the spike right at the exact center of the diagram and actually this is important it's a strange but true fact that the average radius as measured from the center of a circle is different from the average if you measured it off center this off center one is actually very slightly bigger and this thing is really only meant for certain kinds of shapes like this wiggly one is fine but I'm not sure about something like this I mean I can do it but there's parts where I'm actually winding the wheel backwards which is weird and what does it even mean to measure the average radius when some of the rays look like this well I'm not sure exactly what it means but I did it there you go does pup cakes circle of average radius actually mean anything I don't know so what is this thing really for anyway I mean I know what it does but why does anybody care about the average radius of a circular shape well I'm here to tell you this thing is actually specifically designed to read graphs of functions where the graph is drawn on a circular chart just look at the cut they're measuring a circular plot if that's a function then the average radius would just be the average value of the function which is a useful thing to know okay but why would you ever have a circular plot of a function well back in the day there was a common instrument that would produce just this kind of thing usually with a temperature sensor you put a blank piece of circular graph paper in the middle you wind it up like a clock and it very slowly turns the paper while a little arm in there plots the temperature over time you wind this thing up come back the next day and you got a nice circular plot of the temperature changes over the course of the day and how would you find the average temperature over that day you already know you know most of my videos are about old forgotten things that you use to do stuff this here is an old forgotten thing that you use to help you use this other old forgotten thing this exists because this exists and this makes round charts if these things made straight charts instead then we wouldn't need this but they made round charts so we do need this and why does it make round charts because it's a wind up clock thing and I guess that was the simplest way to do it it's a Rube Goldberg assemblage of technologies that only makes sense when used together in this specific way it's a shame really to present the radial planimeter all alone like this so I'm very pleased to announce my first ever direct sequel video stay tuned mm -hmm.